<laughs> That's cute. All right. So welcome everyone. We have a few minutes to go before another, or just a minute to go before we start. Um, today is toadstools. So if you've drawn your picture, then you'll have that ready to go. And the finished picture is up on the camera. I also have added a few touches. So we'll go ahead and we'll do those together as a group. I've got a little ladybug up there and just, just a few additional things that we'll add as we go along. We'll want a two water dishes. So one clear, one for cleaning brushes, one just to have clear water available. Uh, brushes, I have a wide brush because I'm going to do the whole background, the outside, the, the blue first. So I want a fairly good size brush. And I've got a little angle brush because there are some angles in there I want to be sure that I capture. And some smaller brushes. I've got a number two and a number three pointed brush. So that's what we'll, that's what we'll be using today. So if this is your first class, um, this is a step-by-step -step watercolor class. We're not expecting perfection by any means. If you go outside of the lines, that's okay. I encourage that. Sometimes that makes your picture that much better. I also uh, will remind everyone that it's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. If it's a canvas that you're using, it's still just a piece of material not to take it too seriously. You've got the drawing, so if you want to repeat it, you can. And so we like to just do it a few deep breaths just to get in the art mode. And if there's anything that's troubling you, anything happening that you just feel would be good to let go of for an hour, then that's partly what this hour is for. We come together as like-minded artists to learn some new skills, do some things together, be with other people. So we just like to set that difficulty, whatever's happening aside in the parking lot of your mind, just for the time being. And just take three deep breaths in and hold it at the top and then release that breath. So we'll just take it. And, and as you release, just drop those shoulders down, just really open up this area. So deep breath in and hold it and release. You can release fast or slow, that's personally, that's up to you. That moment in between where we hold it for that second or two is just a period of meditation where we just let go and we're completely in the present. So let's do that another time. Deep breath in and hold it and release, drop those shoulders. And one more deep breath in and hold it and release. We hold a bit of tension here. So just give a little shake or a little, just a little personal massage and we should be good to go. And with that, we'll get into the fun part where we can add some color to our toadstools. And as I said, I added a little ladybug on the top of mine. So we'll do that as we move along in the class. So here's the toadstool. We're going to start with the sky. Now I chose cobalt blue. And you can see with my background that it's not completely covered. See, I've got some spaces that are white. Some are lighter, some are darker. That's okay. That's what will add to the look of the sky. If you want to make clouds by using paper towel just to tap off certain places, you can do that. So let's go into some cobalt blue. And if you don't have cobalt blue, cerulean blue would be okay. Just a lighter blue, not a dark blue like ultramarine, more of a lighter blue. So I'm going to wet my sky first. So I'm going right down very close to the bottom. I am going to paint the bottom in that brown color for earth. So I'm not going to go right down to the bottom. 
but I'm going right around the toadstools. Just now I've got some blue on my brush. So, so I'm just, um, just clear water if you can. Just go around everything and not a lot of water. We don't need this totally soaked. We wanna have a little bit of control. So if you use a little bit less water, you'll have a little bit more control of your paint. When we completely soak the canvas, then we just have to let the paints do whatever they do. With this we're just going to have a little bit of control. So just around those branches, if you can get around them. If you do paint on top of those branches, not to worry. When we paint on top, they'll just have a little bit different hue, different color. So if you just can't come into the class, then we're just wetting our toadstool background with clear water. And then we're using a cobalt blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, just a lighter blue. And now is where the fun starts. So I'm not really going to do any practiced paint steps. I'm just going to pop that color on. If it's lighter and darker in spots, that's okay. I'm just putting that color all over just around my toadstools. Some places are lighter, some places are darker. Some of it's running, some of it's not. And sometimes the faster you put it on, the better the outcome. So I've tried to avoid some of those branches. I haven't done so well, but that's okay. So just have fun with it. Drop your shoulders, take a deep breath. And it's okay just to run some of that color as your canvas is still wet, you can still run a little bit of that extra color on top. It'll still blend. And just look for any white spaces. If you've missed a spot, just pop some color in there. And it is going to dry 20 to 30% lighter than when you put it on. So if you want it to be darker, then while your canvas is still wet, add a little bit more color. So if you want it a little bit darker, now is a good time to splash some more color on there. So you can see the colors are the same in the other one that I painted as cerulean blue, or sorry, cobalt blue. But for whatever reason, the camera has changed the picture that's up that it looks a little bit lighter. But this is cobalt blue. So if I want this to look a little bit more splashy with color, while it's still a little bit wet, I can still add a few touches of color here and there. I can just play with it. So just have some fun. And I can see I've got a little bit of pooling down the bottom. So with the paper towel, I'm just going to touch on the edge of that extra heavy paint and it will just absorb the excess.
I'm still playing with it while it's wet. I can still move it around. And now we're going to move from there to the bottom. So I'm using burnt sienna, which looks like clay pottery. It's a reddish brown. And I'm going to just about halfway where my leaves are. I'm just going to put a little brown coating at the bottom just to give the look of earth. That is burnt sienna. It looks like the color of clay pots, sort of a reddish brown. So we'll come back and we'll do some more work on that. But at least we've got our base on to start. So this is a lot to do with mixing colors this class. So we're going to mix the blue that you've used in the sky and that same burnt sienna that you just put at the bottom. So we're going to mix the two together. So when I mix the two together, it's coming up a dark, almost like a dark purple color. And I'm going to use that purple color and I'm starting to paint my toadstool. So where I'm going to paint is where it's not going to touch the blue sky. So I don't, it looks like it's black or gray, but it's actually a combination of the blue you used in the sky and burnt sienna mixed together. So I'm trying to paint wherever my sky is not going to be impacted because I still want to let that dry. I'm starting to, to paint more of the stem. It's coming into contact with the blue, but the blue should be dry. And go ahead and paint the whole outside around the outer edge of your toadstools with the same color. The same color blue that you have in your sky, mine is cobalt blue and burnt sienna will give you that gray color. So now we're painting the outside of the toadstools with that. We'll come back on with the burnt umber 
but right now we're just painting around the outside edges. So we've got cobalt blue for the sky. We've got burnt sienna for the bottom. And then we've got a mixture of cobalt blue and burnt sienna for our gray color and for our outside edges around our toadstools. And remember, take a deep breath. It's just a piece of paper or a canvas if that's what you're using. And with the same blue that you've used, the cobalt blue, I'm going to make another puddle of color. So I'm going to mix cobalt blue and burnt umber. So it's cobalt blue, the same blue in your sky and burnt umber. So we come up with that nice soft brown that we have on top of the toadstools. And we'll go over all of the gray that we've currently done and over the top of the toadstool. So what will be, what will show up is the outline that you've just done will show up a little bit darker and you'll have that nice soft brown, but with the warm, the warm brown with the edges that you've just done a little bit darker. So I'll start at the top of my toadstool with that color, which again is burnt umber and cobalt mix. So I made a good size puddle because I want to do the whole mushroom or toadstool. And I am going over top of what I've already put there. So that will look a little bit darker. But as I do the top, you can see I've got a nice dark edge, but soft and warm on the, in, uh, on the inside of where I'm painting. So it's given me that ridge, so I don't have to go back and try and paint that ridge later. It's already done. Well, it's okay to paint right over top what you've painted already. Because that will show up just that little bit darker, probably not a color that you already had in your palette because we made that up. And I'm not trying to do the whole thing all at once. Short feathery strokes are okay. And if you go out of the lines, you just make your toadstool just a little bit bigger. That's okay. And moving down to my smaller toadstool. Just giving it a nice coating on the top so it's nice and soft. And watercolor is about putting color on top of color on top of color. So that's what we're doing. 
It adds a different dimension. Kathy, Laura is wondering, should we worry about the pencil lines possibly showing through? Um, I would make your paint a little bit darker to cover those lines. If when your painting is completely dry, you still have pencil lines and you're not happy with those pencil lines, you can use an eraser. Once your, camp once your paper is completely dry, you can erase the lines. It's not unacceptable for watercolors to have pencil lines in them though. So not to think that, oh my gosh, it's a terrible picture because I have pencil lines showing. It's perfectly acceptable in watercolor. And believe it or not, we're at half time already. So we have a reflection card that I like to read. It said, when I loved myself enough, I began leaving whatever wasn't healthy. This meant people, jobs, my own beliefs and habits, anything that kept me small. My judgment called it disloyal. Now I see it as self-loving. That's by Kim McMillan. And the suggestion is take a few moments to reflect on ways you loved yourself today. What did you leave behind? that wasn't healthy. When I loved myself enough, I began leaving whatever wasn't healthy. This meant people, jobs, my own beliefs and habits, anything that kept me small. My judgment called it disloyal. Now I see it as self-loving. Very nice. Well, thank you for my selectors that chose that card. It's very important to look at where we can be our best selves. Okay, so where are we at? Um, our ground likely is dry at this point. So we'll leave our toadstools and we'll start to work on some of those green leaves. And again, this is about mixing color today. So we'll take that cobalt, blue again, the same color that's in your sky. And the reason I'm using the same color over and over again is it's going to make this picture look more congruent. Everything will blend together because it's the same colors. If I throw in something totally different, which I'm going to actually, but if I throw in something different, it's it may not completely match the picture. So I've got another little puddle and I've got the cobalt blue and I'm going to mix ochre with that. And I'm going to get a really sick looking green. It's like an olive green. So that's cobalt blue and ochre. So the same blue that's in the sky. Now we're going to take, and I'm using my angle brush. If you have your pointed brush, that would work too. But I'm going to paint those leaves. yellow ochre and whatever color blue you put in the sky. So if you put cobalt, use cobalt and ochre. If you put cerulean, use cerulean and ochre. And it's coming up with this funny looking green. It's really kind of a sick looking green. But these are toadstools and toadstools don't grow where the grass is perfectly green. So in some of my leaves or grasses, I put blue on. And so when I paint those, they're going to look a little bit darker and that's okay too. That also adds. So I want all of this undergrowth somehow to have that funny green. So I'm just taking the the side of my brush, the angle. I am leaving the stem of the mushroom or the toad mushroom, the toadstool white. 
So I don't want to cover over all of the white. And again, that is whatever color your sky is, if that's cobalt, if it's cerulean, whatever blue you used, mixed with ochre to come up with a really odd green color. And if you need to mix a second puddle and it's a little bit darker, that's okay too. So wherever you've got those leaves drawn, go ahead and just paint those in. And just leave the stem of that toadstool white. So as we put that on and it starts to dry, go ahead and put a second coating on part of that stem or leaf just to give another dimension. So you don't have to paint all of it. If you just paint down one side or down the center. And you can go back once that's dry, even after a second coating, you can go back and put even a third coating, which will add and almost make it a 3D effect. But while that is still wet, let's go ahead and finish off the bottom of our painting. And I'm using burnt umber all by itself. So I'm not mixing the burnt umber, but I'm starting to put some dots, just some dots of paint at the bottom of my canvas, right from corner to corner. And then I'm just going to start to pull up some of that the little spots here and there not to overdo it, but just gives it that earthy look where maybe there's some little pebbles in there, just a little uneven look. I can even pull a few of those not burnt umber up into my sticks if I like, into my grasses. And so we're just looking for an earthy look. And if you find it looks too even or it looks too, too prepared, um, maybe that's the right term, then you can use your brush and even pat in places and it will and lift off some of that paint just by patting, patting your brush and lifting, pat and lift. And it will start to give a little bit more of a grainy feel, more like real a sand or dirt would be. So just lift here and there, just with a damp brush. And then you've got a more natural look. And then as I mentioned, for those that are already at that point, if you wanted to, you can go back onto your leaves and add a third dimension, your branches or leaves would have dried somewhat. You can go back on and put a third look, a third color, exactly the same color, but because it's dried and the, uh, the other two are dry, this is a new one, it's just going to be that much darker. So it just gives a little added dimension. So that's up to you if you're not there, if it's something that you're not too concerned about, then we can move beyond that. And if you're ready, we'll put those little dots. You've got some little circles drawn on top of your toadstool. And I'm just using burnt umber. I'm not mixing it with anything. And it's really not that watery. It's, it's um, a fairly thick consistency of paint. And I'm just doing the little circles that are there. Some are smaller, some are bigger. You don't have to do exactly the same as anyone else. So we're 
just putting those markings on the top and that's just with fairly thick consistency paint of burnt umber, the brown. And I'm going to do the same on the little toadstool. Just wherever that pencil marking was already. And if I want to add one or two more, I haven't counted them, so. Now, if you still have your blue and burnt sienna mix, which was the gray that we put on the mushroom or the toadstool all around the outside, we're going to start to put some lines on the toadstool on the inside. So the top, this piece is the top of our toadstool where the veins start to come from. So everything is going to have to match to that area. Actually, you know what? I'm not using that color. I'm going to go to straight black. Sorry that I'm changing midstream on you, but I'm just going to use straight black. This is more visible. So I'm coming from the center of my toadstool out. So everything's coming from that center line. So everything's coming back to the center. It all comes back to the center of the toadstool. And I'm going to do the same on the little one. This is my center of my toadstool. And everything is joined from there out. Then I'd like to do some lifting off to give a light source to my toadstool. On the far side of my toadstool, I'm going to use a damp brush just with clear water. I'm tapping it off on the paper towel and then I'm just wiping off some paint. I'm tapping it off on my paper towel and then I'm going back in again. So I'm giving a light source to the top of my toadstool. So it may take a few times with the brush, not rubbing so hard that you damage the paper. Just with a damp brush, just move that paint. Because you've got a damp brush on there, it will have no choice but to move. And I'm going to do the same on my small toadstool on the same side just with a damp brush. I'm just lightly rubbing to lift that paint off. 
so that we can see that's where the light source is. And as I said during the class, if you want to, you can totally add a, a completely different color just for effect. Um, it won't be congruent with the rest of the picture, um, but I'm going to add a ladybug on the top of my toadstool. So she's an egg shape, and I'm going to paint it all red to start with. And while she's drying a little bit, I'm going to go back onto my leaves just to give that extra third dimension. And I'm just going to do on one side of the leaf a darker color, just on one side. Actually, since my light source is on toadstool side, I want to do that dark on the outside edge. I'm, I'm not lifting at this point. I'm just doing the, the green leaves, just adding a third dimension while I'm waiting for the ladybug at the top to dry. So I'm adding a dark color to the outside of the leaves just for another dimension. Just to look a little bit deeper. So if you want to go ahead and add a little bit of browns in there, or you want to add a little bit of ochre in there, that's okay. Just, just for a little bit of shadow. But we're just gonna play in that area just for a few minutes while we wait for the ladybug to dry a little bit. My ladybug is dry. I'm going to put a shadow underneath her with black paint, just a shadow underneath. We're not going to see much of the head, so I'm just painting a little marking where the head would be at the top, at the center and the front. So there is a gap between the shadow and the head. And then I'm going to give her her line down the back, it divides where her leaves or where, where her wings are. And take a deep breath. And we'll just give her some little ladybug dots. And because she's also on the light source, I want to give her a little bit of light. So I'm just going to lift off a little bit on her back of her body. Just lifting just a little bit of paint. So the light is bouncing off her as well. And so what's left to do is to decide where are you going to put your artist signature on your new piece.
And so there you go. That's what you can do in one hour. So I hope you enjoyed that picture. Bye now.